we've got a rather amazing combination of things. We have the 4th of July on a Sunday itself. The church actually has a whole set of propers for the 4th of July, but when it falls on Sunday, we don't read those because Sunday kind of trumps everything else. So what you got was the collect, or a collect for the 4th of July. It is a time for us as, um, as people who have mixed um, commitments. Those of us who are American citizens, because I don't know that everybody in the room here is an American citizen, we have a certain sense of feeling about it. We are also, and I would imagine almost all of us, perhaps not all of us, are also baptized Christians. I was reading something this week, and it reminded us that when we're baptized, particularly now when we're baptized, we are anointed with oil, and the priest says, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own. How do we, how do we balance all of these things? Well, first of all, I need to proclaim that God comes first. We belong to Christ. And Christ has promised to care for us. And there's lots of things in the scriptures today that I'm going to talk about having to do with that. And so we approach our citizenship in this great nation and every nation which Christians live in and have lived in throughout history as people who have a loyalty to God and to the community of faith that guides and gives a set of, um, I guess, even direction to how we live faithfully. Now, it sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? Except for the fact that throughout history, every group of Christians has been able to mix and match and everything else, and you would be very hard-pressed to find a very consistent way that Christians have behaved as citizens throughout Christian history. I don't know that we're going to do any better. But what I want to raise up is the covenant that we have with God in baptism is one that allows us to move faithfully with our country and with other peoples. And it calls us to remember that the God whom we honor as the creator of all things is the same God that loves all people and does not hold up um, favorites amongst nations or amongst individuals, but cares for all. Now, to get to the lessons today, we have an interesting combination. I'm going to focus primarily on the gospel. This, if you, at the beginning of chapter 9, we're in the end of chapter 10, I believe. Uh, we read through most of chapter 10. We skip some parts. But the beginning of chapter 9, Jesus sends the 12 out. And he sends them out ahead of him, and he gives them somewhat similar, though more brief, instructions. Then they come back. They have the transfiguration on the mount. They have all sorts of things that happen. Peter confesses him as uh, Lord. And then um, we get to the end of chapter 10, and now Jesus sends 70 others out. And he tells them, these others, that they are being sent out like lambs in the midst of wolves. And they're not allowed to take um, an extra pair of sandals. They're not allowed to take a bag. They're not allowed to take anything with them on the way. And not even allowed to take anything they might use for protection against those wolves. One of the commentators that I read said, it said nothing about you can't take a rifle. <laughs> but I, I'm not suggesting that. The, the reality, the reality is, is that they are supposed to go out and become people who are not prepared for every eventuality, but they are to be people who are dependent on God and are open to being the recipients of the grace and hospitality that awaits them. And Jesus reminds them that that hospitality will not always uh, be uh, 
um, effusive, and it may even uh, be non-existent in some places. There's an important piece in this, and I want to focus on how we, who are those who are sent out, were the others. When we get someplace that receives, wants to receive our message and welcomes us, we let them know that the kingdom of God has come near. And if we run into folks who don't want to receive us, um, this doesn't really give us any, in this particular gospel, doesn't talk about any hostility, but just not ready to receive us. If we get to that place, what's the last word that Jesus has for that community? Know this, the kingdom of God has drawn near. Our message to people who are receptive and our message to people who aren't receptive is the same. Because we only have one gospel. And the gospel that we have is the good news of Jesus Christ. And the good news that we have is not good news for people that like us and receive us, and then bad news for people who are not receptive. It's God's good news that we make available, and we let it go that people might receive it. In the same way that we are supposed to practice hospitality where we eat what's put in front of us, where we stay where, we're, where it's offered. We don't um, go from place to place searching for one that's a little better. We offer our message with a sense of freedom that we don't tie a string to it. That if you want to listen to this message, it means that you've got to be everything that I expect you to be. It means that I am here as someone who has listened to God's call and I'm offering you what I understand of the good news, and it's up to you to receive it or not. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, this is the last section of uh, the, the letter to the Galatians, there's some interesting things because Paul lets the Galatians know, and this is a fairly divided community, there's Jewish Galatians and there's Greek Galatians and they see things differently. Paul's message to them is that they need to bear one another's burdens. They need to be caring for each other that people might know that they are all from the same gospel. They aren't allowed to have one approach to the people who are on their side and a different approach to the people who take a different position. I think it's very similar to Jesus in what he's asking of the disciples. But if you read that Galatians passage closely, you'll notice that not two lines later it says, everyone must carry their own load. We're supposed to bear one another's burdens, but everybody's got to carry their own load. I'm, going to decide, I'm, I'm making a distinction that the burdens that everyone carries, that we share, are the things that we need support for in order to be faithful as God's people. The load we need to carry for ourselves is our own awareness and responsibility for being faithful in what we do. So that sense that everyone must carry their own load means that it's not up to Andrew as the pastor to decide how each of you is doing. Everybody has to carry their own load. And it's not about my judgment or your judgment on them. But we still are people who share and care for one another. Now, I think that that is a great offering for people who are going out to be in front of Jesus, to offer the good news that people to whom they go, the people to whom they go might listen and might respond. But our responsibility as Christians is not to decide or judge based on their response, but to have a gift. And the gift that we offer is the gift of our experience and our faith and our connection with Jesus. And we trust that God is the one who is going to make that harvest plentiful if we would simply be faithful laborers. Amen.